Denise here. Firstly, thank you for joining me on my channel. And today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this view. This is Agnondas Bay in Skopelos in Greece. Uh, recently went on a trip there and this was painted sitting on the beach or in the cafe by the beach. So we had a lovely time. Uh, there's more about our trip to Skopelos on the Travelling Brush Dippers and I will put a link in the description as to where you can see more about our travels. It was a fabulous island. So let me get started and show you how I painted this view and thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you hear every time I put a new video up. Thank you. I'm starting here with simply wetting the paper and it was an absolutely beautiful day so everything was drying quite quickly so I had to make sure I did several coats of my water before I started adding my colour just to ensure that I would have time to work because it was all drying so rapidly. I'm using here two blues, a mixture of ultramarine blue and I also had a colour that's in my palette called Peacock Blue. The paints I'm using are Shin Han paints and it's one of their brighter blues. But if you didn't have that, you could do, use an alternative of something like a fallow or an intense, depending on which brand you use. But I just like the two together for a sky. It just adds uh, a little bit of brightness to it, uh, which I quite like. And you can see I faded the colour out slightly towards the bottom of the sky, uh, which also helps to add to the perspective. The next thing I've done is cleaned my brush and I'm just using the damp brush to lift some of the colour out where I want to move it around. Also making sure I don't have any puddles left where I've made the paper so wet. So I'm just pushing the paint around just a little bit. Agnondas Bay where we were is on the south coast of Skoplos which you may recognise some parts of because it's where they filmed a lot of Mamma Mia. So we're sat down and we're painting in this beautiful little bay. So I'm coming in whilst my paper is still damp and I'm going to add some shadows to the few little fluffy clouds that were there. Like I say, my paper is still damp so I'm, I'm able to put this down and then just using a, a damp brush move it around and soften it. So I don't want it to be too dark, just a little bit of shaping for my clouds. When you're painting the sky, it's a case of you have to rush to stand still. So you have to work, 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 move whilst all the paper is still damp. Don't stop, just keep going and then stop and look up and breathe. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a case of, of working at, at high speed to start off with. And then you can relax and calm down a little bit. But the sky really will set the, same, set the scene for your painting. Okay, so I've allowed my sky to dry back more or less now and I'm going to start putting in the layers of uh, hillsides that are in the distance. It's right on the horizon. We've got other islands, we've got uh, distant land masses. So I'm just putting these in very faintly uh, and I have to try and make sure that I put it in faint enough that I've got room to get bolder as I come forward. So I'm putting it stronger at the top and I'm just washing it out a little bit as I come to the to the base of the landmass. It's here along the distance. I'm not sure which island this is over there that we could see. We were on the south uh, of the island. Agnondas is on the south of Scotland, so I'm not quite sure what we were looking at. I know Skiathos is over there somewhere, but I'm not sure if that's what we were looking at. Okay, 
If you'd like to see more about our trip to uh, Skopelos, then please do go over to the Travelling Brush Dippers YouTube page and there will be uh, an episode there that you can see about us travelling around the island and having a look around. I'll put a link into the description so that you can click straight over there if you'd like to. Now on this one it is slightly stronger colour than the one in the background as you can see but it's still fairly paint pale because I want to be able to put another layer in front of it. The other thing I'm doing is you know the top of the hill is, is the strongest colour and then I'm just using some water to wash out the base here so it fades down to the to the waterline basically. That's another little device to allow the one in front to look stronger is by having it sort of misty down to towards the, the waterline, the horizon line. starting to build those layers now you can see each time you put a slightly stronger layer in the ones behind get pushed back and that adds distance to your painting. The colour I'm using is mostly ultramarine and a little bit of muck off the palette but if you don't have that I've always got a bit of muck in the corner of some part of my palette but a bit of blue and a bit of brown just to give you this fairly neutral grey that I was using for my distant hills. Now I have added a little bit of brighter colour as I've come forward here and this one I've used my blue and my brown but I will have added a little bit of lemon yellow into it just to give me this sort of greener version and this is uh, again it's all about perspective about bringing it forward and then I've got some sandy colour that I'm using here for the rocks I'm beginning to start to, to get a bit of definition and that sandy colour I would have used lemon yellow and rose to give me a sort of peachy brown and I would have added a tiny bit of the ultramarine just to dull it down a little bit. Giving a suggestion of where the rocks may be, cracks and crevices, not too dark at this distance, it's still, still relatively distant but I'm beginning to get some information in there. Adding a little bit of this again, greeny blue, not too bright, just to the edge there. A nice broken top to it, which starts to give that suggestion of the uh, trees, the top of the tree line. This kind of again is all about adding to that suggestion of, of coming forward. It's time to start adding a little bit of my sea in. I've got a very similar colour that I had in the sky so it's my ultramarine and my peacock blue and I've got quite a dry brush here and I'm putting it on very lightly and what I'm trying to do is just to catch the top of the texture of the paper so that I can um, have a little bit of dry brushing. That would hopefully give me a bit of sparkle. It was actually quite um, dark the water over by the other islands. The depth of the water is, is giving it sort of a, a strength of colour across there which is quite interesting. See where I'm catching that, I'm just getting that little bit of sparkle. The difference in colour is I think I've got a little bit more ultramarine in than I have the, the peacock that I used in the sky and it's also a slightly stronger mix of colour which is why I'm getting this, this extra dark and I'm putting it onto dry paper this time as opposed to in the sky I was putting it onto wet paper.
As I'm coming towards me, I'm adding a little more of the peacock blue, brightening up the colour of the water. Just brushing it off. I'm trying to keep my brush strokes pretty horizontal. If you if you use your brush strokes in a different direction when you're painting water, it can look like the water is falling out of the paper, out of your picture. So I'm just trying to keep my brush strokes horizontal. Look how distant those those hills look now compared to when we were actually painting them. As I come forward, I'm brightening up the colour, so I'd added a bit more of the peacock blue to start off with. And then the sea here had this lovely sort of green tinge to it as it came into the shore. So to do that, I'm adding... You could either add a little bit of something like yellow ochre, or it would have been a little bit of lemon yellow with a tiny touch of rose in it, just to, to give you that sort of slightly greenier version coming forward. So this is where I start adding bits of the yellows in just to green that down a little bit. I do love painting the sea. show now. Now somewhere out there my husband is snorkelling, allowing me time to paint. He's very good like that. So I've come in here with a darker green that I'm using. Uh, just to create some of the ripples on the water. And I started out by putting them in with a big flat brush just to get some of them down and then I've moved over to a round brush, sort of jumping between the two, um, to put the paint down and then to just move it around. I'm using the round brush just to uh, smudge it and budge it, as my dear friend Sharon says. Nudge it, budge it and smudge it. I'm just using the dump brush just to pull out the colour and make sure it is not clumpy. I want it to be ripply but not, not in clumps. love all of these textures. This is the bit I can get lost in for hours. <laughs> Unfortunately I don't always have the time to do what I want to do but this bit I could just lose myself in and just play. And it is about getting those contrasts so when you're working with watercolour you tend to work from your lighter colours and gradually add in your darks. creating those different little patches of colour that ripple on the surface of the water. Just adding in some smaller details and some extra strong darks. contrast that, that really makes it all pop. And just a 
on the other side just putting in a few more of my little ripples. I kind of call this sideways scribbling. It's just little little horizontal marks that give you these the suggestion of the surface of the water. missed out this little bit of land so we need to come back and put this in and we're supposed to do this before I did all of the sea but once I'd started painting the sea I get carried away because I just enjoy it so um, <laughs> I left this bit out so I've got to come back and put it in now. It's just another headland but again I'm making this stronger and darker and bolder than the one behind it and each time you do this the one behind it gets pushed further back and further back further back and that gives you this immense sense of distance. It's all an illusion folks. The colour I'll be using here again is my ultramarine and my umber so my brown and my blue but I'm just using a stronger mix of the paints. So it's less water and more paint to give me a stronger colour here. carefully doing this because I'm trying to actually create the suggestion of some of the, the texture of the rocks that are, are on this. You can you can start to see this at this distance. I want to be able to show some of that, that texture and that, um, that depth. So I'm just taking my time and doing it carefully. More dry brushing just leaving that texture coming through and then I'm going to add the shadows in as I go I'm just slowly working my way along spend as much time looking at the subject as I do painting really and add my shadows. In places both on the rocks and in the sea I added a little bit of the SAA silver watercolour and it's really difficult to catch on camera but in the light it does just add a tiny tiny little bit of iridescent sparkle to your painting. So I quite like that when I'm painting the sea, it just adds a little extra something. It's an island I've never been to before and I would say it's well worth, worth, well worth a visit. It's a very pretty little island. It's quite small, but it's very pretty. We ended up having lunch and coffees a couple of times or several times in this particular bay, Agnondas Bay. We were there at the beginning of October and a lot of places had started to close down for the season, but this place was still open. There was two or three cafes, there was a restaurant, we had a fabulous fish lunch here. So we really liked this bay, it was lovely. Just trying to work out where where all of the rocks are and where they go. quite happy with the way that the, the layering has given me that distance. Oh, 
Mara touches on there. And just last little bit of dark just on the water's edge. Last strongest shapes and darks. this strange I've never seen a cat sit by the sea before. Tim's finished his snorkel so it's probably about time for me to pack up as well. So here is what I ended up with. I hope you've enjoyed coming along this journey with me. Um, thank you for viewing and please subscribe and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye bye.